Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. We got to talk some mountain weather. We've got a number of big items on the list. I want to take you up to Keystone Ski Area. Live camera, and look what they're doing up there. They are now blowing snow. Love seeing that. They obviously, uh, they can see the changes that are coming in the forecast. It's going to get progressively colder, especially up at higher elevations. And certainly by the end of the month, I mean, we're talking a big pattern shift across the west with potentially an atmospheric river <clears throat> and a couple of different cold fronts coming through. So now you can add Keystone up there. They're making snow. Let me take you up to Loveland. Of course, we knew this was the case. They're making it up there, but they're blowing snow this morning. You can see it happening there. Notice the cloud cover. So this is one of two windy cold fronts that will brush Colorado. Um, in the coming probably three or four days, but this is the first one. And we're going to see that cloud cover, that wave cloudiness, continue to be a factor today. The winds up there are going to be increasing as this front really pinches the pressure gradient. I would expect 50 to 80 mile an hour wind gusts up there above tree line um, as the day wears on. But love uh, Loveland Ski Area, one of my uh, favorites up there. I want to show you this video. Um, this caught my eye this morning. So this is from uh, 1016. So this was a couple of days ago after we got that snow. This is Brighton, Utah. I mean, look at that. That is amazing. Uh, snow coverage. <clears throat> after a three and a half hour hike. Now, I don't know Ski Life, uh, the individual that posted this. But uh, that's pretty cool video. I mean, that's pff, those conditions are actually pretty amazing up there. They must have found a nice pocket of snow. Um, so also an interesting tidbit that I was going to post uh, at some point uh, a little larger uh, of, a, of a feature on this. But uh, I put this on my X account. So we have a new 14er here in Colorado. I mean, this was this was really ground shaking news when this came out, and um, there's a whole story behind it. My friend Brett Forrest, who's a reporter down at uh, KOA in um, in the Springs Pueblo area, put together an awesome story. The bottom line is uh, uh, a person I've been forecasting for for a long time on his expeditions, Eric Gilbertson. He's a true pro. Uh, and I have 100% confidence that if this guy says, based on his survey, that this is a new, the old summit moves to a new location on Crestone Peak, then I totally believe it 100%. The guy is, is just so accomplished and he knows what he's doing. But take a look at that if you have a chance. I'll probably put together something a little bit larger on this because it's such a big story here in Colorado. It's kind of taken off like wildfire. All right, let's get into the uh, the forecast aspect of this. Here is radar across the west. So there's our front, and then you've got the next front up there. So there's number two, there's number one. Both of these are going to end up having a lot of wind with them. Um, here's the front cruising, actually blowing through um, a lot of Wyoming at this point into the Dakotas. And this is going to be racing down and pinching that pressure gradient in Colorado. So 80 mile an hour winds up there in the Wind Rivers and over the Tetons and, and probably uh, up to the north in the Bighorns. And 80 to 90 mile an hour winds up over Longs and a lot of the front range high peaks as that, uh, that front blows on through. All right, here are my bullet points this morning. So we've got two windy fronts, one happening now, another one uh, for 1019 and 1020. You can see the wind gust forecast. Um, not only today, but tomorrow and into Monday, there's a secondary wind surge that comes through for the Tetons um, and also the wind rivers. That might actually be the windier day between Sunday and Monday. And then this is so, so interesting. This has been the season of these remnant tropical systems getting sucked in from the Pacific. And there's another one, 1022, 1023, that kind of gets pulled in. And this one's more of on the low to moderate end of intensity for precept. But 1022, 1023 into the four corners. So some of that moisture will get siphoned in in that area. Um, and then the atmospheric river watch is still on for roughly 1025, 1026, somewhere right in there. That's going to be a pretty big deal. 
And then there, there's your best odds of snow. So this takes into account all of these. On these particular days, these are probably the best odds of snow on the high peaks for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. An extended period of heavy precip there on several days for interior BC. Here's water vapor satellite imagery. And look at this monster low. So that's the next one coming in. There's the current cold front right there. You can kind of see it. So the whites and the blues, that's your moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. These oranges, reds, and black colors, that's all dry air. So again, there's your front somewhere right in here. And then there's the next storm system. And that's going to shoot right in there, but it will send that, that next front down. And the flow, you can kind of see it right now, is this sort of west-northwest uh, type of flow pattern. So that's what's happening now. Let me show you what the forecast radar is going to look like. So we'll start this up early today because I wanted to show you the front, which is right here. You can kind of see it. And this is indicating some very light precipitation with this rain and snow. And I showed you that on radar. Um, that will continue to blow through with, again, probably more wind than anything else in Wyoming and also Colorado. And there's the next storm system um, up there. All right, let's move this ahead. So lunchtime today, there you go. And uh, there's the dinner hour. Here's early on Sunday. You can clearly see the next front cruising down through the inner mountain and the northern tier. Fair amount of precip with it. All right, here we go. There's lunchtime. Look at that precip hitting the, uh, the Tetons and the Wind Rivers. You've got precip right there. So that's going to be some snow at the higher elevations. Uh, here we are, dinner on Sunday. Now here's Monday morning. This is probably 6 a.m. on Monday. The front's somewhere down in here. You've got a little bit of precip behind it, but notice a lot of it dries up. But this is going to produce some heavy wind, uh, some, <laughs> some significant wind across Wyoming, probably even parts of Utah, Colorado, and Montana. Uh, I was thinking Granite Peak will probably see 50 to 80 mile an hour wind gusts up there in Montana. Here's lunchtime. That front really dries up. It's all wind. All right, here we are early. So this is early on Tuesday. Not a lot happening. This is the waiting game right here. Once we get to this, we're going to have to wait until we get uh, into potentially, you can kind of see it right down here. There's going to be a little bit of moisture that gets sucked into the four corners around 22, 23. Then it's all about what's going to come in from this direction right here with that atmospheric river set up somewhere around 25, 24, 25, 26. So that's what's going to happen down the road. Um, look at uh, atmospheric river, atmospheric pressure anomaly. So either higher or, nor higher or lower than normal pressures here. So for example, there's our front right there. You can kind of see the low in the front. That's, that's today. That's effective today. Um, these would be higher pressures right in this area, the brighter colors. All right, moving on. So you're looking at atmospheric pressure anomalies here. This is up at about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. This is the second front. So this is on Monday. And notice a lot of the squiggly lines. You're looking at pressure that's going to be squeezed a little bit. And so, again, that's going to blow out a lot of high wind. Um, there's your area of low pressure. And look out here. That's that meandering tropical system that might get sucked into the flow around 22, 23 into this area. So that's also in the forecast. Now, even further down the road, this is the atmospheric river watch right here. I mean, look at this big pressure drop. You've got a big, strong jet coming in. You've got probably over here somewhere two standard deviations below the 20-year norm for pressures. There's a big area of high pressure right there. So if this verifies, this is all part of that atmospheric river pattern that may set up in the extended. In fact, let's talk a little bit about this. Go in depth. This is effective Sunday, 1025 into 1026. What I see here is a powerful jet stream knifing into the West Coast. And look what it does. It blows into Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. So whatever precip this conveyor belt of wind brings in off the Pacific will likely get blown into Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. So this will have a far-reaching impact beyond the West Coast. Powerful jet stream right there. That's probably 170 mile an hour winds. 
coming into the West Coast. Let's expand on this a little bit. This is pretty cool. So we call this the Pineapple Express. What you're looking at here is total column moisture, integrated water vapor transport. And when you see the greens, the yellows, even some of those reds, that's a very high moisture content of air. And this moist flow is reaching all the way back towards Hawaii and grabbing that atmospheric moisture and moving it and slamming it into the West Coast. And that's, you, know, you hit the, uh, the mountain ranges and that forces it to rise. So look at that right there. You see that? That right there uh, on the 25th, that flow just slams right in there. And if you were to quantify this, here is the integrated vapor transport forecast, and this has strengthened the intensity versus yesterday. Look at that. On the 25th into the 26th, this particular forecast says it is going to be a strong intensity atmospheric river surge somewhere right in there. So this absolutely bears watching. Let me just take a look at the five-day snow forecast. So this does not account for the atmospheric river. But this goes right up to before it begins. So this it looks at both of these cold fronts. So you got a little bit of snow uh, in Colorado. Now, that a little bit of that's from the cold fronts, but some of it's from that, that tropical remnant surge on 22-23. Anywhere you see the purple magenta, that's over six inches. So that's parts of Wyoming. That's parts of Montana, Glacier, a little bit in Idaho. And then you've got a lot of snow potentially over a foot of accumulation, especially on the coastal range. Could be definitely a foot on some of the high peaks through interior BC over the next five days. Um, let me zoom in. So here's Montana. Um, and again, you're right there in that purple pink, you're looking at six to 12 inches up there. All these pockets of magenta, that's up to six inches. That's probably six to 10 up there in the parts of Wyoming if I had to put numbers on it. Yeah, I'd say somewhere between 6 and 10. And then you've got some snow up here through interior BC, Red Mountain, um, Fernie, a lot of those areas. Um, let's do another zoom. Let's go into Wyoming and a little bit of Montana, Idaho, Utah. So in Utah, it's just an itty bit, a little bit of snow right there. I talked about that yesterday. Light accumulations, maybe one or two inches. <laughs> And in Colorado, this is kind of a one to four inch snow right there, if I were to put numbers on it. Berthoud Pass, Cameron Pass, Longs, Mount Zirkel Wilderness, um, Rabbit Ears. And again, up here in Wyoming, this is probably six to ten up there. One more zoom into Colorado, looking at all the ranges. Yeah, this is kind of a one to four southern mountains, one to four central and north. So not a ton of snow right there. Um, here's a snow plume. So this is Jackson, Wyoming. Down in town, there's a bit of snow, 19, 20, 21, but then a much bigger acceleration up here, 25, 26, 27, and beyond. After we get the atmospheric river surge, that pushes a lot of moisture into these ranges, and this, this generates 10, 11 inches by November 2nd on the ensemble mean there out of Jackson. Some of the air bars are up here around 18 to 20 inches. That's, of course, the extreme case, but it's good to point that out. Um, the second snow plume is Denver, Colorado. We've been tracking these two cities for the last few days. So in Denver, this generates two, two and a half inches of snow by uh, November 2nd. So clearly there's a pattern shift. And what it is, largely, is it's that atmospheric river surge, plus we'll bring a cold front in late in the period, and that will bring the snow level down to 5280 in Denver, potentially, it's not a lock, but you look at these some of these error bars. They're up here around 8 to 10, 12 inches. That's the extreme case, but you can see the ensemble mean is about 2 inches. So if you're thinking about when do I need to blow out my sprinkler system or, you know, bring in the plants, cover them up, you're probably going to have to do it by late October into early November. That appears to be where we're headed for a lot of Denver in the front range. All right, you guys, we covered a ton of ground on this. Um, We'll see. I've got a couple of ideas for maybe an update later today if I can get around to it. Um, you know, potentially we'll look, and I talked about this yesterday, I just missed doing it. Uh, the Weather Service uh, Climate Prediction Center came out with some information on the winter forecast that they're using. Uh, look at that. And I definitely want to dive deeper into the new 14er 
that was discovered here in Colorado. And, and, you know, potentially uh, everybody has to go back and climb this thing uh, to say that they've completed the list now. So um, some pretty big stuff right there. And I find it just absolutely fascinating. I love that we're getting into more active weather. I really enjoy doing these updates. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.